so we did gun accuracy. Um, a little bit of background on the guns we use. Uh, the top one is a, these are all 22s. The first one is modeled after a Henry lever action, one of the old war rifles. The next one down is a Browning semi-automatic. And then um, the one on the left is also Browning semi-automatic, only it has um, underneath it there's a red dot scope which was attached to the top, and then the last one is a break action 22 with a scope. Alright, so I have the study. Um, we had a list of things that we wanted to do, or wanted to figure out who is the best marksman, uh, what gun shot the best, and if there's any link between the people and the gun they own. Uh, each person shot each gun with rounds of 10 shots at a time, and our plan was to test uh, which gun and which uh, person shot the best. Uh, setting up the study, we set up a wooden post in the targets um, that was three, 30 paces away, so about 30 yards. Uh, we made sure to use the same distance and same ammunition for all 150 shots being taken by the four shooters, which was me, Chris, Mike, and Connor. Um, because we shot all the shots consecutive, consecutively in the morning, we had the same temperature and the same lighting for all the shots taken. We randomly picked who was going to shoot first and with what gun. Once it was decided, we kept the same order of guns and people. Okay, so how far did you get? Where was the last one you found? It was freezing. <laughs> little post next to the trees where our targets were. Okay, um, analyzing the data, once the targets were dead, then we analyzed the shots, or targets. Um, we would see how many shots could touch an area the size of a dollar coin, no matter where it was on the target. So we would look at the target and then figure out how many shots we could fit in that dollar coin. So we'd move the coin around the target and then figure out how many we could fit inside the coin. And then that was what we, however many shots that was, that's what the number that we recorded. And then once we had all the targets analyzed, then we could compile our numbers into a two-way table that we later used for running our tests. Alright, so analyzing the data, once we had our two-way table, uh, we were able to start running the tests. Um, we ran a chi-square test to compare the shooters to the guns to see if there was a link between how well people shot and what gun they were using. Um, this was to see if the shooters were better with uh, the gun they owned. And uh, then we ran a one prop Z test to see if there was a uh, top gun or top shooter. Um, that's the data that we collected. Uh, after running our chi square test, we received a value of 0 0.708. We ran two one prop Z, uh, T tests, the first one to find out if there was a top shooter and the second to see if there was a top gun. The proportions that we used were 25 out of 40, representing the number of shots that were good with the red dot, the highest number of good shots and the total number of shots taken with the gun. Our p-value was 28,160, representing the total number of good shots, the total number of shots. We got a p-value of 0 0.041. Dollar proportion was 23 to 40, with a p-value of 28 over 160. This re represents the total number of good shots taken by the person with the highest number of good shots. We got a p-value of 0 0.3, 1 through 4. Okay, so this is just kind of visualizing the data. Um, the two graphs represent the individual accuracy, gun accuracy and then the overall accuracy of each gun. Um, so what's this all mean? Based on the results of the tests we ran, we can conclude that of the people in the guns we observed, there is no link between how well somebody does with the gun that they're using, although there was not any one person who was significantly better when comparing the best gun to the worst. There was a significance, meaning that the red dot semi-automatic was 
definitely more precise than the others. <laughs> Stop. You're making me laugh. Continue. Something else to note, it was very cold outside when we were shooting, which can cause people to shiver, possibly making them move when they're shooting. Also, because we used a low-grade 22 ammunition, the ammo is likely to cause some shots to be skewed and not accurate. Both of these variables should have affected every shooter equally, so they shouldn't be confounding anymore.